Hey, welcome back to my channel. So in my last Q&A video, somebody asked me about how I budget and kind of saved as I lived in Korea and any tips on that. So today I am back with that video because I do have a few tips for you guys that worked really, really well for me. Um, I feel like these are pretty universal to wherever you live because um, they're pretty practical things. I thought I'd just quickly talk through how I kind of budgeted my life when I was there. Um, I budgeted my day per meal, so I would save about 20000 won per meal as my maximum so essentially every day I had 60,000 won to spend um, at my max cap um, because that is because you know the average meal here in Australia is like about 20 bucks so I thought the maximum I'd cap it at 20,000 won now really 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 rarely do I go over that limit only because I eat most of my meals at the cafeteria which are like two three bucks so it really didn't end up going over um, so yeah that's how I really budgeted my days um, now you could do it in a different system you can do it depending on your income and your allowance and stuff like that um, but doing about 60,000 won per day also meant that at the end of the week through the jobs that I worked I could um, earn all that back so like I said, these work for me and they're just tips and stuff that you can adapt. Obviously we all have different situations and so, you know, just take these tips kind of loosely and apply it to how you're going to be living over there. First tip is to um, make a record of all your spending. The first thing I did when I went to Korea is I bought this little book. Um, this book is amazing, it's only like $2 I believe and it helps you keep track of your expenses. Um, it has one column which is the date, it has income, it has details and amount and total and balance and all that so you can keep yourself in check um, I would write down every little thing that I spent money on during that day um, and then at the end of the week I will total it um, and it will tell me how much I spent so with a 60,000 won budget per day at the end of the week I should spend no more than 420,000 won um, and most weeks I would spend way below that um, so it would be very very good sort of like way to keep track of if you're going over budget obviously some weeks I would go over budget um, but in that week I could see because of my list um, where I had spent money on and why I went over budget um, so in that first week I was in Korea I kind of gave myself a bit more lean way to make sure I had everything I needed essentially to live for the half a year I was there um, so like it's not like strictly you have to keep to that budget but it was just a number I had in the back of my head to make sure um, that I wasn't kind of going crazy and spending my money everywhere um, my second tip is to make food in bulk I know that for a lot of people living by themselves that um, cooking is a huge problem as in like how do I cook efficiently and not end up eating like instant noodles every day even though that's like literally the cheapest way to um, survive essentially there so I would cook in bulk um, aka I would make foods that you could divide and freeze so I made like a lot of stews a lot of like curries um, a lot of like pasta even so things that you could like make a bunch of sauce for and then like freeze it um, and then kind of bring it out and eat um, in Korea also you are definitely not gonna have a rice cooker if you're especially a student um, so a lot of your rice would be microwavable rice um, so it really matched up well if you could divide your sauces and have your microwave rice and then you can have one portion one portion and kind of just heat it up um, but for me that saved me a lot of money because essentially I could just have a whole week's of food done in one day and I wouldn't have to spend any more money um, but also if you are a student um, do go eat at your cafeteria because it is really um, cheap there and um, for SNU students especially we could get free refills on our meal so essentially you could spend like two three dollars on a meal that could just last you for the whole day um, so that's just like a cheeky tip for the students. I'm also, I'm pretty sure if you work there, a lot of workplaces also have food cafeterias, so just make sure to eat at cheap places when you can, um, but if you're cooking at home to make bulk sort of meals. Third tip is when you go shopping, make sure you make a shopping list. Um, it is so tempting to just buy everything, so I feel like before you go shopping, it is good to kind of have a list of things that you want to buy on that day. Um, that way you can keep to it and you won't kind of like explode your budget. Um, I feel like if you move to a poorer country, sometimes when you go grocery shopping and things like that, it can be really, really exciting because you're seeing products that you've probably never seen in your country, um, but it's important to make that list. Um, and also Daiso is your friend in Korea. Daiso literally has anything like 
just a whole range of stuff so if you can go to Daiso and get it I would just recommend you go to Daiso and get it my fourth tip is don't shop when you're hungry or when you are bored this is when you are most likely to spend way too much money on things that you probably won't eat or won't use um, obviously I'm not saying that you shouldn't go window shopping and stuff like that um, but there is the risk of you just spending money because you're there and you're like oh there's a new lip tint I'm just gonna buy that um, and stuff like that and obviously when you're shopping when you're hungry you just want to eat everything so you end up buying like an overly large amount of um, snacks and even fresh produce obviously you wouldn't want to buy that much fresh produce because unless you cook it quickly they're just gonna kind of sit and rot in your fridge so definitely 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 don't go shopping when you're hungry um, and just be careful when you are window shopping because you're bored because sometimes that's when you kind of end up buying things that you might not necessarily need in that moment Number five is kind of like a small thing, but I think it makes a huge difference um, And that is bring your own plastic bags when you go shopping um, I don't know what it's like in your country, but Australia before I left didn't imply like the whole bring your own shopping bag thing We were kind of just starting that movement, but in Korea, it's very much in motion Most places if you go shopping and you want a shopping bag, you do have to pay for it um, Now I know it's not that expensive to buy a plastic bag, but if you're buying one every time you go out for a shopping trip first of all you're just gonna end up with a whole lot of shopping bags and second of all that is a sneaky little cost that will just slowly 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 catch up to you if you're buying like a plastic bag every day obviously at grocery shops they're cheaper but some of the like makeup shops or like boutiques and stuff like that you do have to pay a bit more for a fancier bag um, but if you know you're gonna go shopping or even if you don't know you're gonna go shopping just always have like a plastic bag with you handy so that you don't have to pay for that my sixth tip is that um, for storage containers um, I use any sort of box packaging I received when I ordered a package um, what do I mean by that I mean because in, for my situation I knew I wasn't gonna live there forever so I didn't want to buy all these stuff that would then I wouldn't necessarily need at home so instead of buying containers such as like these ones um, that could store stuff if I received a package which came with any sort of box I would use the box Ooh, as a storage instead and you could use it to put like nail polishes, hair stuff, makeup, books even you can line up your little books and stuff like that so they became ways that I could store things and at the end of it I could just chuck it because it's just a paper box um, especially those larger boxes that you might get they're good for if you are going through different seasons and you want to store clothes outside of your wardrobe you can shove them in one of those boxes and shove them like under your bed or anything like that um, so for me I really like keeping these especially if they were tiny boxes I would fold like the sides in and it would just end up being like a little storage box um, it helps you save money um, also it helps you when you have to move out you don't have to kind of like haul all these like containers back to your country so my seventh tip and my last tip is don't forget to treat yourself I mean I know budgeting can sound like this huge like headache thing and you could be constantly stressed by it but on weeks where you have saved well or on weeks where you have been saving um, feel free to treat yourself go and get something nice for yourself go and have a slightly more expensive meal um there's nothing wrong about that i mean i don't feel like budgeting and all that should be super super stressful um i think you should find little moments where you can enjoy it um so yeah if you definitely have a little more money that week or that month just go out and kind of like treat yourself to something a little bit nicer than you normally would um, and that also makes it more enjoyable um, at least that's what I found um, obviously might be different for you um, if shopping is an issue maybe you don't take on that tip um, but yeah I really like doing that every once in a while and like treat myself to something a little nicer um, and yeah so those are like my seven tips for budgeting and spending in Korea. Um, obviously, like I said in the beginning, this is from my personal experience. Um, everybody will have a different situation, um, but I thought these worked pretty, pretty well for me. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions about this or any questions about budgeting and living in Korea, stuff like that, feel free to pop them down below and I'll try my best to answer them as quick as possible. Thank you for watching this one. Um, like I said in my other video, I'm going to try for weekly uploads. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'm still sticking to that by this video, which should only be like the second video of October, but who knows, life could get hectic. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for your questions. And I will see you guys at my next video. Bye.